gaming on Linux has become incredibly easy. Yes, there are cases with anti-cheat games where developers just don't want to enable the Linux support, but outside of those cases, generally I don't check ProtonDB to see if the game is going to work because in most cases, it just works. For example, Persona 3 Reload just came out the other day and it works as well on Linux as it does on Windows. However, there is this whole developing subset of Linux that I was completely unaware of. Now, as many of you probably know, but many of you probably don't, Fostum has been occurring recently. And when Fostum happens, it is a time for developers to get together, to talk about the random things they've been working on. For example, this developer from Igalia, update on open source Vulkan driver for Adreno GPUs. This is a project in the Mesa project called the Turnip Driver. This is going to provide Vulkan API support for the Qualcomm Adreno GPUs. You know, those GPUs that are often used in Android phones. At this stage, it's still very much a work in progress, with the A7XX series GPUs now being completely supported, and the A6XX series GPUs being partially supported, but that series is split into a bunch of sub-generations, there is still support in a subclass of these GPUs though. Now I know some people like to say, oh, Android isn't Linux. It has all of this additional stuff on top of it. It has this really weird user space. Oftentimes the user space is completely proprietary, but at the end of the day, Android is still Linux. It's weird Linux, but it's Linux. So what does a Vulkan driver for these Android GPUs actually let you do? Well, the intro of the video should have given you an idea about what we're going to talk about. Windows games, which in many cases work basically perfectly under desktop Linux, also running on Android. Now, I do need to make it clear that this is not just a matter of Vulkan. Vulkan is just one piece of the puzzle to deal with the graphic stuff. The other problem we have here is that Basically, none of these games are compiled to run on ARM64 hardware. Instead, they are made for x86 hardware because this is what you're often going to be using in a desktop system. But all the pieces are available to make it happen. They just need to be improved. Some of these pieces are exactly the same as desktop Linux. The first being Wine, used for converting the Windows calls into Linux calls, but Wine by itself isn't going to get us very far. We also need something called DXVK. Now, most Windows games rely on a graphics library called DirectX. DirectX only works under Windows. Technically, there is WSL support, but you're not going to be using it on an actual Linux system. On Linux, we have a library called Vulkan. Now Vulkan is also supported on Windows and some games do make use of it, but for the most part they are using DirectX. So what DXVK does is converts those DirectX Windows calls into Vulkan calls, but DXVK only works up to DirectX 11. So for DirectX 12 there is VKD3D Proton which basically does the exact same thing but for DirectX 12 instead. But this still doesn't deal with all of the whole ARM and x86 stuff, all of this tooling is what we use on desktop Linux. For this, we need one extra tool. That being FEX, a fast user mode x86 and x86-64 emulator for ARM64 Linux. This basically just does that final piece, converting your desktop CPU calls into calls that make sense on a mobile CPU. This is assuming that all of the pieces come together and all of them work well. Obviously, they all still need improvements, but all the pieces are there to lay the groundwork for an experimental solution. Now, in this Agalia talk, a project by the name of Cassia was mentioned. This is not an Agalia project, but they did want to highlight it. This is Wine plus DXVK plus VKD3D Proton plus FexCore on Android. And turn up this Mesa driver would have first party support there. Now, pretty much the only thing that exists about this is this translation of a Chinese post over on Billy Billy from August 14th, 2023. So if anything sounds slightly off, just chalk it up to translation issues. So what is Cassia? Cassia is an Android app that will allow you to play Windows games on your Android devices. 
when will Cassia be released? We're currently planning to release the first version sometime in 2024, but due to the nature of software development, it might get delayed. Rest assured, we're trying our best to deliver a good product. Now, this is the part that's probably going to disappoint you. Will Cassia be open source? No. We came to this decision after considering the state of forks in Skyline. I'm not entirely sure what that's referring to. I couldn't find anything on this. It should be noted that only the app part of Cassia will be closed source, that being the interface and all of the integration to bring things together. Any changes we make to open source projects such as Wine, Fex, DXVK, etc. will be open source as well, regardless of the license, and will strive to upstream any changes we can as we want to further the state of Windows on ARM64 Linux. Additionally, we're committed to fully open source everything if for any reason we decide to stop working on the project so that someone else can continue our work. Whilst I don't like what they're doing, I understand where they're coming from. As they say next, will Cassia be fully paid? No. Doing monetization right is important to us as we need to financially support the work we put into the project while ensuring that those who cannot pay get a great experience as well. At the moment, we have no finalized plans of monetization, but we plan to have a one-time payment for strictly non-essential changes, such as filters or themes, and a reoccurring payment we get all of those perks plus early access in a similar capacity to Skyline Edge. Once again, I have no idea what this is. We are trying to strike the right balance here while being committed to our principles such as no ads or monetization of core features such as higher performance. But when you have a project that is fully built on these open source libraries, I would have liked it to be a donation model instead. But this is the way it's going to be, and you know, it is what it is. One thing I will believe when I actually see it is this though, if they step away from the project and they actually open source it. Other projects have said they're going to do this. I don't know of any major projects that have done so. I'm sure there is something out there and I know there are things that are really, really old. For example, the really old id software games, but I will believe this when I see it. Now the goal here is to make this a self-contained app. No need for termarks or anything else like that, it is just you have the app and everything that needs to be done is done directly in the app. Now they will have their own custom version of Wine much like is done on Steam, but you will be able to bring your own version of Wine if for whatever reason that version is going to work better. And speaking of Steam, we want to support as many game launches as possible, but we have to work around certain issues to do so performantly, such as the usage of CEF in Steam, which won't perform as well under FEX. Nonetheless, Steam will be a number one priority and will work on other launches as we see fit. Obviously, most players are going to be on Steam, so that's probably where the initial focus should be. Now I'm sure this is going to be a great project, but I don't know why this is the one they chose to highlight when there are already implementations that are completely open source. For example, here is a project called Mobox. Mobox is a project designed to run Windows x86 applications in Termux using Box64 and Wine, along with another project called WinLater, and this one has been getting quite a bit of attention. Once again, WinLater is an Android application that lets you run Windows x86-64 applications with Wine and Box86 slash Box64. These are both completely open source, and it should be noted that whilst that's proprietary and this is open source, everything here is very, 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 very experimental. Yes, some things do work, and yes, some things do work quite well, but most things don't. You should not go into this expecting a good experience, you should go into this expecting an interesting one. It's not like the hardware performance issues are still there. Yes, if you're trying to run a low-end phone and play Elden Ring on it, Obviously, there are going to be some problems there, but if you're dealing with hardware that's fairly powerful or games that are fairly lightweight, like, you know, some random indie games, the performance is going to be there. But remember, 
that wine didn't start out good. 25 years ago, it probably sucked. Proton back in 2018 absolutely did suck. It takes a lot of time for these solutions to come together, for these solutions to get good, and especially things like Fex. People haven't been trying to run full-on Windows games on an Android phone using this. A lot of the optimization just isn't there yet, and things are going to get better over time, at least if people are interested in this being a problem space and working on the issue. Personally, I think it's really neat. Yes, these games are made for Windows and made for x86, but who's to say that you can't make translation layers and assume those translation layers are fast enough, actually get the software running on a completely different system and use the software in the way that you want to use it? That's how I feel about it, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon Scribes to the pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and run the software the way that you want to run the software.